It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery. Buck Bait. Better the Hunt. Rebel Six Rubs and Seasonings. Easy Cut. Limb Walker Game Calls. Hunter's Blend Coffee. Packer Max. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Scent Blocker. Scent Lock. Copper John. And Stanislavski Release Aids. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on goodtalkradio.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal Podcast, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams sitting in the UNJ Cabin North, and damn, my partner is sitting in UNJ Cabin South. Absolutely. We're just kind of uh, practicing our social distance. Right. You know, with everything right? that's you going know, on. That's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, so what we need to do. We made that conscious decision to, uh, you know, to kind of keep our distance from each other so families can stay safe. So how you doing, exactly. Dan? You know what? And, and no matter what's going on and, and what you believe or, or do, just being the common sense safe is a good way to start. Absolutely. But, uh, so, but speaking of getting started, why don't uh, why don't we go ahead and, and you take care of some of the business for us that we always talk about? You know, that's right. And uh, uh, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to send you this the new slide. Ah, that's OK. But, well, I'll use the old ones. Well, that's right. So the first slide you got up there uh, is Hunter's Blend Coffee. Right. That's right. So you're going to have to uh, go with that, and you got you you got to you got to lead me on this one because I can't see them. So well, got to use the UNJ promo code, and you can save ten percent on your order at huntersblendcoffee.com. So make sure you get over there. You know what? And, and then what's going on uh, to in today's world? What better way to kind of sit back and, and relax a little bit with a nice, good hot cup of Hunter's Blend coffee every morning to start your day off with? You know, and then besides that, we've got Buck Bates. A lot of new products down there. Use the UNJ promo code Up North Journal to save twenty percent on your order at BuckBates.com. Like I said, they've got some new products in. Make sure you go check them out. And we've also got a promo code for Rebel Six Rubs, a good supporter of Up North Journal. If you use North Journal, you can save twenty percent on your order there. And Dan, I will say I have been using the rubs on my popcorn. I've I've tried. Four, oh, five you're... five different flavors now, and I tell you what, I haven't found one that I did not like yet. Hmm. They're all good. That's a good thing. I don't I don't know how how much you can screw up popcorn though. Popcorn's awesome. Like it is. Eat. It is. And uh, there's one other promo code which we don't have the slide for. It's uh, trips for trade. We talked to him last week on the show, uh, and he provided us with a discount code for our supporters and listeners who want to go over there and join up with him. And it's a twenty percent off. And I do believe. The code is up north twenty. So you go over there, you use the code, you get twenty percent off. It brings an annual membership down to about a hundred bucks, and you're good for the year. So get over there, check them out. If you're wanting to do a trips for trade, I know there's a lot of angst in the uh, outfitter world right now about all this travel, non-travel. Uh, I know Dave Wilkins was mentioning that uh, out on the uh, Going out of the country and stuff was a, was a big uh, issue as well. So kind of nervous all there. So hopefully everything gets cleared out. But uh, make sure you get over there and check out uh, Trips for Trade. That's right. It's uh, T-R-I-P-S, the number four, and T-R-A-D-E dot com. It's all one one word, tripsfortrade.com. There you go. And you go over and check them out. Check out our episode last week if you haven't yet because uh, they, they offer a great service for a very economical price. And, you know, hopefully you can get some of that done and things will be better here real soon. So uh, I want to give a quick shout out. Your brother's in the house tonight, Terry DeFaw, Jim Turkey Killer uh, Miller's in the house, Ken Cicluna is with and, us. And you know what? You know, you're speaking of who's in the house. And I, I am, I'm kind of excited because I just read here that uh, because we're now back at our 7 o'clock time zone, uh, time slot. Yeah. Charles Byram finally can catch us because we're not during his nap time. Isn't that nice of us? Jeez. Sorry to interrupt nap time, Charles. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Come I on, know man. We, I didn't know we were interrupting nap wow. time. Wow. Wow, man. Right? That, that's tough. So Okay. But yeah, glad Good. glad you're back on with us, Charles. George Cavitt's in, in the house as well. And, and uh Kelly Default, your daughter's on board. So yeah, yeah and, we're and, still following that. Right, right there, Ken Sakuna. He says he puts spicy white tail and dragon dust on everything. Yeah, that's right. It's good stuff. So Try the wild boar rub on some popcorn, and, and even some of the uh, the waterfowl. Uh, I forget what that that one is. Uh, you know what? That, that's for the, the bird, thing. The, the wild and bird. It's just one season. of those things that um, 
you you got to take care of and um hopefully everything goes well right on so so what have you been up to dan i haven't seen you since well actually i did i saw you yesterday and i guess let's talk about that what are you waving at you killing something over there? Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm chewing a fly out the door, but uh, you know how that goes. So, um, so getting back to yesterday. Okay, I'm, I'm playing with my mute button here. So okay. if I go in and out, it might be. Uh, no, I got you. Entertaining. I got you. So, but no, but yesterday. Yeah, it, yesterday. Um, was that not awesome? We went over to Sunrise or what? Sunrise Archery, the newest PSE dealer in the Mid Michigan area. Um, if anybody, if you've been following us here for quite a while, you, you know the situation we had last year. Uh, we lost our, our good buddy Jim Beasley uh, over at Spot Shooter Archery, and uh, you know it's just it was devastating to the whole community. But uh, another archery shop here locally that did not have PSE picked up that line, so we now have a brand new PSE dealer right here in our back door. And that Sunrise Archery, and uh, we are gl- so glad to Abs- have absolutely have it's them. Awesome, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be awesome having a shop right here in our backyard uh, carrying PSE, and and look forward to doing some work with them. So hopefully, it's going to be a, a good long relationship, and I expect nothing but great things. So you got a you know, cool exactly. shop too. You know, oh yeah, the, the I you know what I don't I've never been in there and. I was presently surprised surprised at what was in there. So yeah, it's they, uh, uh, the boot section they got there. They got that whole room full of boots and and footwear. You know, and for hunters, that's key. It's it's huge. So exactly, uh, oh. it's nice to have some some options here locally that we can go and take a look at some stuff. But also get our bows, you know, worked on and uh, pick up gear and all that kind of stuff. So and actually, they're located right smack dab halfway between your house and mine. <laughs> exactly, which is pretty awesome. Oh, my light went out. Hold on one second. One second. Got to turn uh, my light back on. I tell you what, man. See what happens. I, I let this guy out of the cabin, and all of a sudden, he is just, yeah, I'm going to bring his mic down while he's throwing stuff around there. But I tell you what, uh, you let this guy out of the cabin one day, and, and all heck breaks loose. He's knocking stuff over, shooing flies out of his room, hitting the mic button. But yet and still, he likes to blame me for when I turn his mic off. I tell you what. Well, I guess I'll carry the show here until he gets his lights back on. He needs to pay his power bill. But, uh, you know, speaking of Ken Cicluna, um, I seen that he was out posting some photos. He's been out doing some fishing today, and him and Charles, I know we're talking back and forth, and Charles Byram over there in Iowa, got a little snow in Iowa, so I don't know if some fish would be biting just yet for you over there. But uh, some good things coming here for Ken. He, he was excited. I talked to him on the phone today for quite a while, and he was amped up, ready to go, got his rod and reels out, went out with a buddy. He was practicing s- social distancing as well. He was uh, at one end of the boat, and his buddy was at the other end of the boat, and they got out on the water. So, And that, I guess that's the key right now uh, to doing all this is we just need to make sure that we practice social distancing. And I know when Danny and I, when we went over to the shop yesterday, that was one of the things that I was really worried about. And I told him, I said, you know, we got to, uh, well, wait a minute. Here he is. He's he's back. There you are, Dan. Did, yeah. Did you get the power turned back on? Yes, I did. Lights are back on. Good. I was just telling everybody oh. how we were social distancing yesterday at the shop. Oh, yeah. You know what? And you know what? We started off social distancing so well, but then they started getting busy. They did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, people coming in, getting their bows worked on, looking at new bows. So, um, you know, picking up gear. Um, yeah, they were pretty busy over there. And I guess, you know, getting into the show tonight, that's that's kind of what we kind of wanted to talk about. Uh, and speaking of that, I do have a poll that I'm going to publish right now. And it's, if you had free time this week, are you using it to get outside and do anything outside? You know, yes, you know, got to get outside or every chance I get or no, I don't want the COVID, you know. So vote now. We want to know what everybody's doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see. I see. Ron Howard it did a little shed hunting today. Yeah. Uh, my brother says, as we get older, naps are important. Right. That's my brother for you. He's old. Well, I've been outside pretty much all week. Today, I didn't get outside. I'm. I don't know. I'm just. I, I guess I'm feeling the, the the confines of the house right now. I just. I didn't have any energy today. I just blah. Spent a lot of time working here in the cabin, trying to get things ready for tonight's show, uh, rearranging some stuff and making sure that we were able to do what we needed to do. By the way, you need to tilt your camera up just a little bit, bud. Oh, hold on. Where am I? Let me, let me get my... He's still rearranging oh. his cabin. Uh, I must have hit my screen on the way out. So, but what... Okay. So, yeah, get back to the social distancing thing. You know, we got over there. I didn't even park next to Danny. 
Um, I didn't want my my Jeep catching the COVID from from his uh, his Chevy, so I, I I separated one whole parking spot. You did you, from you, him. You did a nice fine job of social distancing, and, and you even and, opened the door uh, for me. Nope. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I let you in, and I didn't so touch anything wouldn't... in the store. I kept my arms folded under my my armpits, and we talked and walked around and checked stuff out. Exactly. So, you know what? One of those things about social distancing distancing is I've been since since the gyms closed down, uh, I've kind of been trying to to keep up some form of uh, activity that uh, so I decided I, I used Google Maps and I figured out five miles. OK, where well, can I go? And, it, and it's a five mile walk. Well, back up just uh, a little bit. When's the last time right. you're at the gym? I got the picture up of, of the, your last visit to the gym. What night was this? By the way, the that, sky was beautiful. Oh my gosh, that was last week. Was that Saturday? I want to say Monday, Sunday. or maybe it's Sunday. It might have been Sunday night. It and, wasn't Monday because uh, they shut them down Monday. So then it was Sunday. Sunday okay. night I was in there at uh, about eight o'clock, and that's when I was walking out. It was just about then, and that's right because I got over there at eight thirty. You you had uh, actually just left, I think, and then I yes, and I was I took this picture. When I was sitting there, and there was there's was nobody in there. I mean, there, with me, there might have been ten people at most. How was it when you yeah, were there? Th- that's probably a, that's probably about right. It was about ten people, and uh, it was eerily weird in a way. Yeah, but it was. It, but, I said it was good because I could uh, actually work out and not have to worry about getting you know being able to get, not get on a machine or anything like that. It was nice. You could get your workout done and get out of there. Yeah, exactly. And, and and I went in and I sprayed the machinery down first. Yep. And then I did, did my workout and then sprayed it again. So I was very comfortable with what, you know, yeah. uh, everything that they use there. And they clean that they clean that place pretty regularly anyway. So I, I wasn't really worried about socially being there and others. Right. Uh, so it was nice. But like you said, I think there was probably maybe 10 people in there, maybe right. a little bit more when I left. Right. So it was, it was, uh, you know, you and I, we talked about this last week a little bit amongst just between you and me, you know, is, yeah, there was some concern, but at that point, you know, everything didn't blow up, you know, it didn't really start right. lighting up in, in the United States until really Monday ish, you know, <laughs> then Tuesday, it really hit the fan, you know? So yeah, um, and- Pedro de Emporo, he actually hit me up on Facebook that night. And after I post that picture, he's like, bud, he said, I don't know if you're seeing what's going on over here in Spain. He said, but you need to take this serious and stay out of the gyms. And actually, that was that was our last night. That was. They closed them down and on Monday, and 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 all the uh, places, uh, dining rooms, uh, gyms, anything that could hold people, basically, has been shut down to just the drive-throughs. So yeah, yeah. My daughter, she's still working. She works at a fast food place, uh, but it's drive-through only. You know, they shut down their dining room, and the bars are shut down. Restaurants are shut down. Um, you know, what, what's kind of going on at your work? I mean, I know you're working from home. You don't have to say who you're working for, but I mean. Right. It, it, it's, it's, it's no big deal. I work for General Motors, uh, and I'm at the main tech center, and we've been getting daily reports. Okay. Every day we're getting a report from uh, them, and I see as of today, uh, March 22nd, we're up to five cases uh, of people coming down with the COVID there, and they tell you where they were. In the complex, mm-hmm. and when was the last contact they had there? Okay. So it kind of gives you a directory of, well, was I in that area? Was I in that building? So far for me, I haven't been uh, anywhere near where they said that these people were right now. Now okay. I've got some coworkers that uh, have been, so they're a little bit more uh, anxious anxious and, and listening to what they should do or who this person, where he was exactly. Now, like when they say, uh, depending on what building you're at, uh, when they say second floor, well, you're talking a, a second floor of about a ten football field. Right. So it, it's it's like, okay, did he walk the halls? Did he stay in one spot? Uh, what was he doing there? So um, yeah, so they're, they're keeping us updated, and basically, right now we are on uh, a wait and see until at least uh, into April. I think March 31st. I think they said. Uh, they might make a determination if we can come back or if not, or what, what's going to happen past that point. Okay. Gotcha. So you're just kind of on a wait and see deal right now. Uh, right. And, yeah. and being able to work from home, um, some of the things we can't do uh, with some of the stuff, it's going to get kind of delayed, obviously, but the, most of the stuff we can do from home. So it's not that bad uh, work as usual. We try mm-hmm. uh, a lot more phone calls. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, where I'm at the TV station, uh, you know, taking precautions there too. It's uh, we've scaled a lot of stuff back. So, and 
you know, where we're at, we got to get the the news out to the people. Otherwise, you don't hear what's going on locally. You know, so it's uh, it's one of them deals where you, you just need to, uh, you know, well, be careful. It, for you, um, you're really important. Uh, there's no doubt about it. What you do and what you have done in the past 30 years ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, people are looking for you for uh, to get out the news of what's going on, what needs what needs to be told to the people. Uh, if somebody's speaking, governor, president, anything. But uh, yeah, you're definitely uh, you're on the front lines as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's uh, you know my wife is too. She works at a, at a uh, grocery store and uh, she's cashier. And, you know, she's anxious as well. So, you know, uh, I can't imagine what it'd be like to be a healthcare worker right now and, and dealing with this stuff, too. So uh, first responders, I mean, there's so many people right now that are they're standing on the front line. I mean, where I'm at, I'm, I'm pretty safe, you know. But, yeah, I, I do have to go to work. But the, but the point is, I guess, there's, there's people out there that have to deal with this face-to-face every day. So, you know, hats off to them and, and uh, you know, make sure that we keep them in our thoughts and prayers. And... Absolutely. I've got a few cousins, uh, four, five, that are actually – in the health industry uh and emt nurse a doctor yeah and um they're all taking precautions because if they go down uh especially uh, i got a couple of them husband and wife combinations if one goes down with it and the other one gets quarantined for 14 days that means both of them are out of the hospital for 14 days yeah that hurts the hospital well just like city of detroit they had five uh, i think it was five or seven police officers i don't remember the number it was real low but like 150 or 60 of them are quarantined now yeah i think i think it was like five and then 150 were quarantined yeah it's like wow you know how many people that affected so but i'll tell you what let's uh let's take our first break we come back let's lighten things up that's what we said we're going to do tonight and let's talk about what you and i've been doing throughout the week to kind of stay on our workout regime and other things we've been doing so absolutely all right we're going to step outside we'll take our first break we'll be right back after this PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back. Second segment of the show, practicing our social distancing. Up in our general cabin north, Danny's in cabin south. Right. So, but uh, before we went to break, um, we were talking a little bit about uh, what we've been doing and staying busy. You know, we talked about, a little, we got a little bit into about uh, working out, you know, there at Planet Fitness and then it got shut down. So, how did so now you... you're stuck. Yeah. Now you're stuck, right? So you and I have been a, been going to the gym regularly for over Seven, a year. And, 17 months. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, they it, it, it's almost like they locked and closed the doors. So now, what, uh-oh, we got to do something. So what, I, I know what you've been doing, but but tell everybody what you how you approach this. So what I did was uh, I, I've, I've got a doctor's appointment coming up in April, and there's a goal I'm trying to get to with my weight. Okay. So it's all hands on deck to get it to me to this goal. So what I did was I said, you know what? Uh, I was doing the elliptical. And so like I said, I said, okay, I got to figure out something. I, I don't have a gym here. Uh, I don't have the Mike Adams gym in my basement. I didn't and, either until this week. <laughs> right. So what I have did is, is what I've done is I got on Google and I figured out five miles. Where can I walk for five miles? I'm like, all right, so I'll walk five miles a day, get myself outside and force myself to do it. And I picked different spots okay. that I've measured out five miles, and it's outdoors. And this last week, uh, what happened was uh, the weather w- was not bad. And so it was actually pretty good. It rained on me one day, which okay. was kind of, uh, oh, well. So where did you start out. at? So uh, I started over at the park, and uh, Seven Lakes State Park. And I walked there, and it's, it's two and a half miles from the front entrance all the way to the back of the boat launch. It's how far? Two, two and a half miles? Two and a half miles. Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't either. So I said, I walk from the entrance to the boat launch and back. So where did you park miles. your vehicle at? So the first time I parked at the boat launch and I walked out and then back in. Okay. Makes sense. Yep. And then the last couple of times I've parked right at the entrance there where we park when we're over there hunting. Okay. Over there by the little guard shack. Yep. Okay. And then from there, I've, I've walked all the way to the back 
all the way to the road and back to the car. So it gets me about five miles a day. It takes okay. me about two and a half hours or two hours, two hours. Okay. About 50 minutes away. Okay. So uh, during the week, there wasn't really a lot of cars. There was a few. Today, it was packed. It was sunny. It was nice. And there was a bunch of cars out there that was just, it was uh, it was good to see. A lot of people were definitely getting outdoors and uh, taking advantage of the beautiful weather out there, whether they were walking, uh, biking, hiking. I saw a couple boats. I saw Ken post that he was messing with his rods and reels, mm -hmm. and there was two boats that were putting in. So I don't know if they're... Uh, fishing or they're just doing a trial run i don't know gotcha but, uh, yeah so it's it, it's been a little different but you got to do it if you got goals yeah well what's this picture i got up here of the dirt road what's that all about so that's a dirt road did so you go digging I, for I, mud or what i could have really uh actually that was another five mile trek i did the first one was at the park a couple of times i've been to the park now that's five miles okay uh another one i figured out uh a five mile trek was to go to the store so i walked all the way to the store. Okay. I was picking up some dairy creamer for my coffee. Hunter's Blend coffee, matter of fact. Right. And uh, walking home. And that equaled just about five miles. Maybe a little bit less. But I made sure. And I was just outside walking around, making sure I was outdoors. And that's uh, back on the back roads of uh, walking on the dirt road. And when you do that, uh, obviously... There's no sidewalk, so you just got to be cognizant of what you're doing, how you're walking, where you're walking, because, yeah. <laughs> when the cars come by, splash. <laughs> well, that's it, too, right? I was looking. There was no there was no mud puddles. And uh, actually, on the picture that you did show of the dirt road, if you're, you're looking that way and you look to the left, you're looking at Seven Lakes State Park. Looking to the left there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to, wait a minute. No, to the right. The cattails no. are on the right-hand side. It's around the right. It's whatever that way is. Okay. <laughs> that's the state park. Yeah. I remember that big cattail swamp because I always I always looked at that on a, on a map, and I tried to figure out a way to, to get to the back side to hunt that, and it's just too wet. Right. Exactly. Well, right now, I've, I've been thinking about walking through the woods myself, but I noticed uh, right there at the entrance to the park where you can kind of see into the woods, there's a lot of water sitting in the woods right now. Yeah, there is. Um, you know, when I, I took Ben uh, squirrel hunting, we, we haven't talked about that part yet. I took him squirrel hunting a couple of weeks ago and uh, my, my grandson for the first time, our first trip out in the woods. And we'll save that and talk maybe next week a little more. But when we were there, there was water in that section of woods there. You know, where, like I said, where we used to park uh, to go into the woods to turkey hunt. Uh, yep. it, it wasn't flooded, but you had to, you had to maneuver around. You know, there was there was some holes of water there, and of course he wanted to step into one of them. <laughs> Being a three and a half year old kid, he's like, "I want to walk in the water, Papa." <laughs> All right, knock yourself out, but you get your boots wet, you're done. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but yeah, you that, know, that spot's that, wet. That's the thing, and uh, uh, you're worried about COVID, and but also you got to be worried not worried but just make sure when you're out walking through the woods or anything you're going to get to the mud make sure you're you're dressed properly it was uh a little cool but not hot yeah so what about uh you know this this time here we've had a mild winter and a lot of people are start, starting to worry about ticks too we talked about that last week a little bit you know um yeah and uh it's you know, that's one of the things coming that's coming right absolutely we're going to be we're going to be inundated with them I, i'm getting a feeling because we did not have that solid uh, cold spell that you like to get that feel of a couple of weeks of solid cold. We, I don't think we ever strictly had that. Right, right. Yeah, not, not enough to kill them off anyway. So I know up north at our deer camp, they had a real mild winter. I was talking to our camp manager today at length, and, uh, you know, he said uh, it's an early spring. Deer move back on the property. They're out of their wintering yards. They're back on, on looking for food. He did some frost seeding actually to yesterday. They, oh, nice. Yeah, they frost seeded all but two fields, so everything's ready to go. Uh, hopefully we get a good green up and, you know, it takes off. So, well, that's what you can, you know, you hope that you get that cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, get mm -hmm. those seeds in there, that moisture, get you a good green up come uh, a month from now. Yeah. You know, we were talking on the phone actually, and the big lake out in, out in front there of, uh, of camp, he was watching and there was geese on the water. The, the lake was probably about a third to halfway open. And they were right there against the ice shelf. And all of a sudden, a big flock of mallards come in and scattered them. Mallards weren't practicing good social distancing. So oh, geez. That's not nice of them. They, they took nice the geese off. <laughs> they, they went right in the middle of that flock and away they went. So, <laughs> so. I did see ducks. The, the, the mallards are out there. I did, actually, I did see geese as well. So they're, they're around as well. They're not nesting, though. So it's okay to walk by the geese. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet. I mean, they're not nesting yet. But when they do, watch out. 
That's right. When you when you see them nesting and stuff, they get a little bit anxious if you get a little close. Well, it's interesting. You're talking about uh, getting out and seeing animals out on your walks and stuff. Yesterday, I went out to shoot my bow, and I was upstairs looking out the back window. I, I was up there getting, I don't know what I was getting. I was getting something. I can't remember what it was. Maybe may have been my pants or something that I was going to wear outside to shoot with. And I looked out the window. There's 11 turkeys in the backfield. You know, and they're about halfway to the house, between the woodlot and the house. So I could see them pretty good. And all of a sudden, two does come tearing out of the woodlot. And I'm like, man, I wonder if a coyote's chasing them. So I kind of waited and watched. They didn't practice good social distancing either. They tore right through the flock of turkeys, busted them up. They came in the field behind my house, circled around down by the water, and they scattered off two... uh, uh, the ribeye in the sky. Uh, what are they? Um, oh, Sand Hill Cranes. Sand Hill Cranes. So they, they weren't through them, so they weren't practicing good social distancing with them either. And then they ran in the field next to my house and across the dirt road they went. So and uh, uh, you, you know, I haven't seen those either, uh, Sand Hill Cranes over there. That's surprising now that you mention it. Usually everywhere. there's a few of them over there. They're all, they're all over here. I've got a, I, Every time I turn around, I hear them or I see them. I mean, there, there's dozens of them in this area around here. So, and, uh, but then I went out to shoot my bow. I watched the birds. They crossed out of the field onto the next field over through a tree line. And then I saw this, this big squirrel hopping across the field. So it was nice getting outside and seeing some animals, you know, it's not just getting outside and getting fresh air, but the seeing animals. And that's the thing, you know, here we are, we're worried about what's going on. You know, we're all up in arms and well, we got to stay away from each other and all this, that, and the other, and worried about the economy. Animals are just doing what animals do. They're, they're carrying on. Yeah. It, it, they are. They literally are, are getting into the spring, the spring swing, the things that are going to be going on for them. And whether they're, they're turkeys getting into the strut or their deer starting to rebound off the winter. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got the sandhill cranes returning from the south. Ducks, geese coming back. Yeah, it's it, it's starting to uh, the woods is starting to become alive again. Yeah, it's nice, and I, I tell you what, I th- I really think for a mental uh, relief or a mental. Uh, rejuvenation for us right now. I mean, for us hunters, we we are always uh, waiting for this time of year because we want to get outside and we want to see these animals and, you know, get uh, ready for turkey season and start prepping our woods for the deer hunt in the fall and all that. But uh, I, I think just everybody across the board right now, you know, if you can get outside and get to the park, get to your local park or go to, you know, some state land somewhere. And right now is a great time because I heard the state of Michigan, they have actually, uh, they're not going to enforce the uh, the Michigan passport sticker you need to get into the parks. They're opening it up for everybody during this crisis. Nice. That's a that's a great way to do it. And I mean, it's it's like if they're not going to do that, uh, by all means, get into that park, get some walking in, uh, check out the outdoors. It's it's a great time to get outdoors. The snow's gone. Yeah, absolutely. So, get yeah, and I and think the it. weather this week is not going to be that bad. Fifties, I think. Yeah, high forties, low fifties for the next couple of weeks, actually. So, yes, yeah, spring is coming and it's coming fast. So. Before you know it, we'd be cutting grass. <laughs> oh, great. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with that either. Actually, I got a mole in my backyard. I actually thought about running the trap line. I got this, this mole has totally destroyed our backyard. And uh, Really? Yeah, he, he's he's going to get put in a witness relocation program really quick. Because uh, if I get a hold of him, he will be relocated. But he may not survive the trip. <laughs> no, I, I don't think he would. So... But uh, I tell you what, uh, let's go ahead. We'll take our next break here. Take our second break. We come back. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll kind of run down a few of the things I've been doing, and uh, we'll we'll carry on. So yeah, let's let's do that. And uh, congratulations, Tammy Duck. I see she got her 2020 fishing license today, so oh, she's she? ready for the new year. Yeah, that's what she says there. All right, good deal. And actually, I, w- I want to talk a little bit about that here. And just uh, we, we'll talk about that coming back first. Denny okay. Steiner's in the house too. Hey, Denny, and uh, yep. a buddy I work with, Tony. Tony Zyra. Hey, what's going on, Tony? So I tell you what, we're going to step outside, we'll take our next break, we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back. Third segment of the show. Still practicing some good social distancing. Uh, we are. We're, we're, we're trying to do our best here and... Uh... I'm trying to take precautions that uh, everybody should just take common sense precautions. I got my hand sanitizer here. So I got that here in the cabin. So, yeah, that's that's a precaution I'm taking. I got my 
my Oz radial 400B ozone unit here so we can uh, destroy some uh, some germs. Got mine. We, we can get rid of, uh, you got your hand sanitized, there you go. So, there. You know, use, use an uh, ozone generator to uh, get rid of mold, bacteria, and uh, viruses. So it'll help you along the way if you've got one of them fired up. If not, go over to Scentlock dot com and check them out Click oh on and i see my tabs. brother was out out towards lansing it looks like and he saw some big groups of uh sand hills and turkeys a lot of turkeys over there in that that area over there in eaton and ingham county over in there they're just they're covered up in birds yeah they are they got a ton of birds over there but, and uh, even tony gert said you should be you should be preparing to plant the lease Oh, preparing to plant the lease. All right. Well, that means uh, I, I got to get ready here. As long as they don't put travel restrictions on, um, I'm looking forward to going to Indiana. I want to get this stuff behind me so I can get out and do some stuff. I want to get in the woods. You know? Right. Absolutely. There's uh, I, I, a friend of mine. Uh, he went up to the UP this weekend. And uh, so that's really social distancing. He, right. <laughs> from what I read on Facebook, uh, the last mile of, of the, the winter trail, uh, he had to walk it they got the sled stuck and everything they had like four feet of snow or something it's that bad huh yeah he's 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 on the north side of the up uh toward the superior okay okay gotcha snow belt uh, well if they got a sled stuck i would say they're in the snow belt they got it stuck in, in the middle of march so right exactly yeah they so, got they got hammered pretty good up there this year i think so right so you know what talked about me and what i've been doing out out outdoors what mm-hmm. what have you been doing because i know you've been posting some pictures uh, of of the adams gym yeah well you know you, you kind of started off talking a little bit about work and uh, i took this picture i think i i took it and actually i shared it with you first but uh here's here's how we're dealing with it at work uh, i got got my uh my rubber gloves on Wiping everything down, you know, we have everything we have is computer driven. So a lot of keyboards and mice. So we're wiping all of our contact surfaces down, and uh, you know, and we're using gloves when appropriate. But uh, that's that's kind of the way we're rolling right now. And actually, right now, no cases at our place. You know, we're we're all healthy and staying uh, high and dry. But uh, you know, last week, once this kind of all hit, they canceled our outdoor or our indoor archery league so yeah, yeah they did so you know i've got targets that we use on the league i've got plenty of those sitting here at the house so i, I got my new bail out uh uncovered it from being in winter sequester and i actually shot my round uh that we normally shoot at an indoor league so and how did you do i shot yeah I, I shot pretty decent um the wind was blowing a little bit I'm not making excuses. It's just it was blowing a little bit, but um, I shot I shot a little bit better than average for the for you know what. Oh, that's awesome! So, you know that, that's you know that's a thing. Uh, I was getting out there uh, and, and and finishing up what it, it ended a little early for us. So, mm-hmm. so but yeah, I did. I went out and shot, and uh, and then this week I did the same thing. I I got I got out there, and uh, this would have been yesterday. This is from yesterday's shoot. Got my Hunter's Blend coffee set there. If you look real close at my bow holder, there's a little cup holder there, and right underneath my arrow there, that's uh, a nice hot cup of Hunter's Blend coffee. Not that's the something off. they don't serve at the at the league. Is is it's something to drink while you're shooting? No, no, they don't. No, they don't. So, but yeah, I uh, I shot really well yesterday. I uh, actually the last my last half, I was actually on task to possibly shoot my best half ever and shoot my best round ever. So yesterday was really good. I felt real good on, on target. I uh, I was concentrating really well, and and the shots were just just flying, you know. And it was one of you, you can't explain it, you know. You know what it's like, Dan. All of a sudden, oh, when when you're on, you're on. You know, kind of like you at the last the last week that we actually shot indoor. You know, you were you were on fire, man. Is like you were just pounding the center. So um, and that, it's that one comes of them along days with, with with practice and confidence, and you're yeah. just doing it, and you're getting out there, and it's one of those things when it, when you got it, mm-hmm. you, you just continue with it, and you don't try to let you don't overthink it. When you get that feel, go with it. Yeah, and and it was rolling, and I got to my last, my very last two arrows, the very last two I had to shoot, and I'm like, you know, I can I can break my my all time best half and best round ever, and uh, and I shot, uh, I think I need I needed one, I could lose one point and tie, but if I lost two points, I would have. Uh, I'd be underneath that score. Right. Yep. And you know, if I, if I'd shot a perfect round, I'd have been two points above. So, um, yeah, it, I shot two eights. 
Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I was, that's, I, that's the other part that you, yeah. that you really can't. The pressure was on. It was. It, it, it's really hard to do self-pressure, but it's also really hard to do uh, competitive pressure when somebody's standing next to you uh, and you're trying to, you know, going at it head to head and do that well you know you and i we were a team we were shooting yep. team. It, it was a team league you know and we were the two-man team against the other teams and even even with that you know you i, I hats off to you man you have improved so much this year um and i used you that last week to pressure myself into shooting better and you were ahead of me a point or two then i was ahead a point or two we were battling back and forth you know, all the way through, and uh, and then you had one shot that went a little bit awry, and it gave me some freedom, you know. And I'm like, dude, why'd you do that? Now I don't have that pressure to keep keep you know keep me under control. And uh, actually, you almost come back and got me. So right, and and that's the thing. It it, it it when it starts to click when you're out there, you, you you're discouraged, but you you just keep at it. And one yeah. of the things I learned, uh, you just keep at it. It's practice. It's weekly. It, it's it's you start to figure out whether what it might be that you're trying to whether it's it's a process or it's a feel what you're trying to accomplish to get that shot that you want. Yeah. And or or matter of fact, maybe it's uh, timing of which bull to hit first you got the three you start go clockwise counterclockwise up down whatever so yeah, but well, it, it's a lot of that is practice well i'm throwing the target back up here so looking at the target what is your shot sequence when you do the 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 three spot what's your first one so so um i start typically lower right lower left top and why is that you know what i have no idea but that's always the way i've done it uh, so when i've got into there i started noticing and uh, one of the shooters that shoot with us, Gina, uh, noticed that my top spot one week was kind of a little bit um, not uh, – my arrows weren't hitting where I want them. They were kind of floating, mm-hmm. to, let's say, to the right. Okay. And, and, and her advice was slow down, that you're, 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 you're going in your sequence, but when you get to that last one, you're just hurrying up to get the round done. Mm-hmm. And so I concentrated on that to make sure that my – take my time and make sure the last – shot at my top bull was taking my time and i think that helped a lot okay all right well my sequence i start at the top and i shoot the top then i come down to the lower left then the lower right and and my thought process is the top especially when you're shooting top row instead of the bottom row and what we mean by that for those of you who may not know there there you, you when you put your target on the wall you know half the shooters put them on the top row and then right underneath them targets is another row and you're either shooting top or bottom for the first half, and then you flip your target to the opposite spot for the second half. So when we're on the top, shooting at the top line, that top target is, is up there. So I feel like I'm forcing to get up and into that target. Does that make sense? Yep, exactly. So you're 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 getting to that point where you're forcing yourself to push yourself up there. Yeah. It I, can be good and it can be bad. I feel like I've got to, you know, aim up a little bit, and when I do you know, you, you're exerting that energy. So when you shoot them bottom two, it takes a little less energy. So I feel like get get the hard one over with, the high one over with, and then I, I've got more of an even plane to shoot uh, for the for the other two. But uh, it doesn't work on the bottom row so much. But um, right, I, and whether that's right or not, I don't know. It just it, it works for me. It exactly, and I, and a lot of this is that exactly exactly what you sell. What it works for you. Yeah. What works for you might not work for me. And I actually tried to reverse my uh, starting at the top, working down. It just it just didn't feel right. So it's like, all right, go back to this. Start concentrating more on taking your time mm-hmm. and doing what you need to do. All right. So so that's what I, I did outside. That was last week and this week. And, um, and, and, and speaking of outside, uh, my brother is asking, and I think you got it. You might have it there on the counter. Uh, what was the tick repellent you had? Do you have that canister oh, sitting yep. in front of you? Yep, sure do. Um, here, let me pop, put it up full screen here. Give me just one second. This is... You can show them what it is. Yeah. Here you go, Terry. This is Sawyer's Permethrin Clothing and Gear Insect Repellent Spray. And yeah. I think you can get that at Cabela's. I got this... I think that's where I got. I either got it there or Gander Mountain. I can't remember which. Yeah, but any any outdoor store should have that. And one thing you're doing with that, Terry, uh, make sure you follow the directions. You don't want to inhale that. Make sure the wind is at your back when you spray this. If you right. if you inhale this stuff, I'm telling you, man, it's 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 nasty. It's toxic. Uh, you you hang up your clothes outside. Hang them on like a hanger, 
you know, put your coat on a hanger or your shirt, whatever it is, and then put your pants on a separate one, you know, and pin them on there. Whatever you got to do to get your pants to stay on there, but you want them all spread out. Put them on a tree limb. That's what I like to do outside. Get away you from did. the house and then get the wind at my back. And then I spray the clothes and then you wait a few minutes, let it dry, take and turn them 180 on that same limb, then hang them back up, spray the other side. And I always usually do two coats, you know, of whatever gear that I'm using that year for turkey season. I've got two different suits that I usually use. And uh, this is probably, I've used this two years now. This would be the third season. And this is, it's it's about a third of the way left. I got, I've used about two thirds of the can. Okay. So. And it's a good thing to to, uh, to do that beginning of the season and maybe do a little rip, reapply depending on how um, this your season's going, right? Right, exactly. So, you know, and typically I don't wash those until after season. You know, I'm not worried a lot about scent control during turkey season. Um, I will use some scent lock gear depending on how warm it is. If it's, you know, if it's there's a chill in the air, I'll, I'll put on my, my heavier scent lock stuff. And uh, I do have the Bottomland uh, camo pattern now in a real thin layer of scent lock. Um, if I'm out on a running gun, I'll, I'll wear that. Just, you know, I don't want deer busting off. And, you know, if I can, if I can at all help it, I'll, I'll use that as well. So. Yep, exactly. And I see Charles Byron mentioned it's a good time to combine your workouts with your archery. Absolutely, Charles. Charles. No doubt about it. You, you say that, Charles, and that's what I forgot to talk about. So yesterday morning, I got up, you know, uh, no longer got Planet Fitness. So we've got Adam's Fitness downstairs in the basement. I did my full chest workout and abdomen. And I mean, I pushed it hard for two hours and I was dead. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder what it'd be like you out and shoot. <laughs> How'd that work out for you? I almost broke the record, my personal best. Ah, okay. I want to say it about killed me, <laughs> but I did it. You right. know, I shot my two practice rounds. I was actually going to count my two practice rounds. Uh, the first one wasn't bad. I, I think I shot a 20, 29. Uh, but then uh, then I threw a shot bad. I shot like a seven and then I shot like an eight and then another eight. I'm like, no, that's practice. But then after that, clean scores all the way through. Nice. Uh, from there Excellent. on down, you know, and I took my break at half halfway through after 30 arrows, I took my halfway break for about till five minutes. Then I got back to shooting again. But by the last, by the time I shot my last two or three ends, you know, the last six or nine arrows, I was, I was feeling it, you know, uh, my shoulders were burning, but I stayed with it. And in the second half, man, I, I was tearing it up. I, I was really pleased with the way I shot. So it's going to be interesting. I think I'm going to, I'm going to push a little more to shoot this week um one maybe one more you know in the middle of the week or maybe maybe on the days that i don't work out because now i'm kind of doing an alternating thing you know one day on right. one day off so you know we'll, we kind of play it and see how it works out i don't know yet but you know and and uh, charles byram's talking about combining and you know now that charles is able to join us from his nap time the truth is starting to come out about ken Sakuna saying that he might have missed some of our live feeds due to his nap on sunday afternoons come on man guys Use the UNJ promo code. Get yourself some Hunter's Blend coffee. Save 10%. Use UNJ on it. And that way you guys would be all freshened up and ready to rock for the, the Up North Journal live stream and podcast. <laughs> well, well, now they got no excuse now that it's 7 o'clock at night. Right. You know, come on. Come on, guys. I, You know what it was. I think Ken was probably battling hoisting all those big bass that he was catching, you know, and wore them out. And he had to take a nap from lifting all those fish in the boat. Well, I hope it was that and not the dreaming of it. <laughs> yeah, he's probably out there and the boat was rocking. He fell asleep, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, exactly. Rocked him to sleep. I, I think as of right now, I think his son is still beating him in the fish count for the year. Oh, so that means Ken didn't catch any, huh? Right, I, I don't think I don't think he, I didn't see no pictures. And as of right now, there's no proof. So I still think his son is beating him. Uh, that sounds good to me. You know, what do they say? If if it uh, if there's no, no pictures, it doesn't count. I think, right. I think that's exactly. the way it goes. So that's all. But good so, stuff. so you've got your workout going. I noticed you posted a picture with Maddie. Maddie joined you in the Adams workout gym. Yeah. Well, you know, kind of getting into that. I mean, like I say, there's a picture of my last night at the gym, you know, I was sitting in front of the rack and I don't know, just for whatever reason, took a picture there. You know, I always like to post a picture. I don't post pictures of myself working out. I'm, you know, I'm kind of funny about that. Um, I just, I, I don't like doing that. So <laughs> I don't, I, I don't want people but, judging me. You know what I'm saying? Well, well that, and you ever tried doing a selfie on elliptical? Good luck with that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, the thing was, is they shut this down. They shut the gyms down here in Michigan at three o'clock in the afternoon on Monday. I got out of work at six o'clock and I went to Dunham's because they had, uh, this barbell set on sale. And I got the picture up now of my gym downstairs. They were completely sold out of them. And I really? asked the guy, I said, well, 
I said, are you getting any more in? I said, because the sale only lasts for three more days. He goes, yeah, we're getting more in, but we don't know when. And uh, he kind of gave me, you know, time to call and check and yada, yada, yada. But he said, as soon as they closed the gyms, everybody went to the stores and started buying all the gym equipment. So, <laughs> and it was true because I was looking, I was looking for this barbell set and like the dumbbells that you see there on the floor, those, the only thing that they had at Dunham's was 40 pounds and above. Everybody was bought, bought everything from like five to 35. <laughs> they were all gone. Okay. None. So I'm like, hmm, what am I going to do? I said, okay, I'll go over to Wally World across the street. I think they they got gym equipment. Let's see if they got any yep. dumbbells. So I went over there, and what you see there on the floor, I got I got a 20, uh, two 25s, two 30s, and a 35. And I want to add uh, another 20 and 35 to, to the mix. But I got what I needed, what they had, um, to you know put a set together. And then I bought that weight bench there as well because I knew I was going to get a barbell set. I just didn't know when or where. Next day out of work, I got out of work. And I called around, and the Dunhams and Flint over by my work had two of them, and I got one. Oh. Of them. Yeah, the one on Mill Road didn't have any; they were completely out. So, yeah, it was you know they think you're they're buying toilet paper, eggs, and milk and bread. They're also buying gym equipment. So, <laughs> well, if we're gonna be if we're gonna be stuck in quarantine, stuck at home, yeah, might as well work out, right? Well, that's just it. You know, I mean, that's the reason I I, I wanted to get something. Is I mean, I've been wanting to put a home gym together. That was the thing. I wanted to do some work uh, on days that I, I didn't really want to go to the gym. I didn't have time to put a full workout in. I could come home and work out later in the evening. So, but uh, yeah, here's me laying on the, the workout bench and Maddie, she's doing her workout. So yeah, I, uh, I was there on, on the press doing some stuff. So it, uh, yeah, it, it, it was all right. You know, it, it's, it works. Is it, uh, is it Planet Fitness? No, it's not. There's no, you know, there's things I can't do, but there's ways I'm improvising and finding ways to do a lot of the things the same way. Right, exactly. And that's the thing we got to do. You know, we got we to gotta learn to improvise and, and make things work. Just like when you're out hunting or you're out in the outdoors and something happens and you got to improvise, whether, you know, um, whatever it might be, you figure, you figure out a way to, to change it up and, and, and make it work. Absolutely. So, hey, I tell you what, we're, we're running a little long here on this segment. Uh, we'll go ahead. Let's take our last break. Come back. If y'all got any questions, we want to hear from everybody out there, you know, that, that's on the live stream. What are you guys doing to get outside? You know, what are some of the things that, that you, you're doing a little different? You know, how is this affecting you as far as being able to get out and do what you like to do? So, you know, we'd like to uh, share the, some of the, the tips that you have as well of uh, improvising and getting out and doing what you want to do. So we're going to step outside. And we'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at pscarchery.com. Welcome back. Last segment of the show, hanging out here. Um, you know, I just checked the uh, the uh, poll here. A hundred percent of the people voted and have said that yes, the free, extra free time they have, they're getting outside every chance they get, and that's great to hear. I'm glad. You know, and that that's also coming out of the 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 winter. Uh, the winter blues and being stuck indoors and finally the weather's breaking pretty much everywhere that they, they gives you outdoors for that you're not freezing but you can get out there in the sunshine yeah you know and uh and also i, I talked with dan yasa uh for psc this week and you know i asked him about the factory i said you know what's going on out there with with all this stuff going on he said man the factory is just full up and running he said they are cranking it out so yep, there's no excuse to not get some gear you know if you're looking for gear they've got it Yep, and uh, actually, uh, there was two posts. One was uh, what they were doing to make sure to be safe with this COVID going on in the plant and everything. And then our buddy Bobby posted uh, the, uh, the the kits that were uh, actually, I think they were some of the Dudley bows getting ready. Uh, the kits with all the parts in each kit was getting ready to be assembled. That's uh, He says, that, you know, so they're pushing them out. Yeah, they are. And actually... Uh... Sunrise Archery is getting some of the Dudley bows in. Uh, so they I don't know when they're going to get their shipment in, but when we talked to them yesterday, they're going to have them here in the mid-Michigan area here in Fenton. So yeah, you, you want to get your so, hands on one, they get in, get over and shoot them. You know, maybe when he gets one in, maybe we'll go over there do a live feed over there from him. Uh, my brother's asking, uh, what are you thinking of planting down in Indiana? 
Don't know. Uh, we had a lot of seed left over from last year, and actually, I don't even know what we had. Um, it's been a year. <laughs> um, Tony, if you're still online there, let us know if what David's got in mind. Um, you know, I know David Boggs had uh, had our seed set in back, and uh, that's what we we're going to plant this year. So, but I may have to let those guys do it. You know, if if they put restrictions on travel restrictions, you know, then I'm I'm stuck here, and that's yeah. You you you'll be stuck here with everybody else. Yeah, and I I hope I hope I hope they don't do that. I hope everybody is sensible and they stay at home. You know, there's no sense in getting out and you know push if you it. don't need to. Yeah, don't you know? Don't push it. You know, you know. I, I told my dad. My dad's 75, and uh, you know he he's going to the store every three or four days, getting what he needs. I said, Dad. I said, find somebody there in the community, like one of our cousins down there that's, you know, younger. I said, when they go to the store, have them pick up what you need. There's no sense in you getting out and, and getting into these stores. You know, stay at home. Why, why do I, I, I can picture his answer to you. I just, I can hear it in my head how he would tell you what he, what he would say. Yep, yep, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to. Right? Can't, can't say it on the show. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> no, um, he's being sensible. He's, you know, he's not going to church. He's not going, we've got a cousin that's, uh, it's in a facility right now. Um, he's got cancer, and uh, he can't go see him. You know, right. they, they've shut oh, them well, down. So, well, that's a, a lot of it is uh, uh, with the older folks, uh, whether they're they're in homes or what's going on. Uh, they're not allowing them in the building, so they have to visit via the window. Right. Yeah. It's uh, and 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 Tony Gertz, uh, matter of fact, his comment back at us about the trails being open using the three D trail, and he says that Dudley Bow shoots really nice yeah i that's uh that's an nxt 33 is it not isn't that the evo nxt 33 with the dudley uh trim package on it yes yes the extras so i do believe so i know when you and i shot that and actually we just dropped that video last week um uh, about the nxt 33 when we were down at ata and danny did that bow not shoot nice or what i mean that that bow really blew me away it shot really nice so it was it's a really nice shoot hand in Really nice bow in the hand shooter. Absolutely. So, if, like I said, get over. And actually, they've got the thirty three, don't they? Over at Sunrise, uh, they have a thirty one, thirty three, thirty five, and yes. thirty five. Yeah, that's right. They got all three. They got all three of the NXTs, and he's waiting on the Dudleys and the Carbons. Uh, it'll be it'll be a few weeks. So check them out. And for the Absolutely. youngsters, I think I saw a couple mini burners there too, if I'm not mistaken. There was when we did the live live drop, we were in front of the fireplace, and there was a couple mini burners sitting right there, waiting for some youngster to come and check them out. So there's no excuse. Get out to the range, your local ranges, and shoot outside. It's, it's you know that's what they're encouraging people to do. Just practice social distancing. You don't have to cram up together on a line. Stay six feet apart and shoot. You know, get outside, right. get some fresh air. You know, get or outside. like Tony said, that he's got the 3D trail open. Uh, you know, go out to, and shoot your 3D courses, you know, spend some time out, outside, you know, get out in the woods and walk, what have you. So, but uh, absolutely just get out, just be outdoors, man. It's a great time of the year. The woods is waking up. Things are becoming alive. Is it a little wet? Yep. But mm-hmm. wear your boots. Yeah. Right on. So, Hey, I want to get your take on something. Okay. Uh, today I was watching and our governor from the state of Michigan was on a national news channel. Um, there's no sense in saying which one it doesn't matter. And she was being asked about uh, some of the people here in the state of Michigan, some of the representatives were actually suggesting that in this current crisis, that maybe we're encouraging people to get outside, just like when they, they pulled back on the, the, the park passes, the, the little passport sticker you needed to get into the state parks. They're letting, they're, during this crisis, they're saying, park's free, go into the parks, and we're not, you know, not going to charge for those. They were actually suggesting also that maybe uh, hunting and fishing licenses right now, they should maybe pull back on them and and pull the fees off of those. What do you think about that? So I think uh, right now, um, let's see, the only hunting season coming up is turkey. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we are having, like like Tammy did, she bought her new license. You know, we do a a free fishing weekend uh, in June and in February February or January, right? Yeah, February for ice fishing. If that's the case, they've already allowed the park pass to, to let that go. Um, I don't see why they just couldn't say extend the the fishing, uh, free fishing weekends uh, for the weekends and, and just, you know, for let them go for a month or two or, or a month. Maybe say, I'm just going to guess, let's just say till June 1 mm-hmm. and just say, hey, between now and June 1, you're good. You know, if you need to get out, get some fishing in, 
uh, whether it's for food or actually just to get outside because uh, that also helps getting that fresh air, getting yeah. people out, not enclosed, mm -hmm. uh, incubating it. So uh, I would see something like that. I don't know if I would start looking into like the, the down the fall hunting licenses or anything like that. Uh, Turkey, I think we're, we're still really good because that's really toward the end of April, more April, late April, May. Right. So I think we should hold that for now. But I think the fishing license, we could definitely do something with that to help people either get outdoors or if they need to get out and fish if they need it for food. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of that same mindset. Uh, you know, if, if we just opened it up and anybody could get a turkey license, well, we know what that could cause. You know, it's, it's turkeys here in the state of Michigan are highly regulated. They're micromanaged in areas. And it's there. I think we, they could do some damage if they just opened it up and just give free license out. I don't think that's yeah. the answer. Fishing, though, I, I'm much like you. I think, yeah, you know, whether it goes to the 1st of May and maybe then if it's still going on, they extend it another month. But, you know, open it up because what that I think what that'll do is you got to go to the store to get your light. Well, you don't. You can get them online. But generally speaking, most people are going to go to their local um, outdoor sh store to get their license. And, you know, they'll buy maybe some new line for a rod and reel. And if they don't have a rod and reel, they're going to get their kid a rod and reel, you know, where they can go with them. Uh, they're going to buy some bait and some tackle, you know. And it's, it's just, it's saving people. If, if a father and son and maybe a mother and daughter, a family of four want to go, uh, what, what's a fishing license now? Isn't it $28? Uh, 28. Yeah. All season is 28. I think. Yeah. 20, um, 28 bucks. So, I mean, times four, you're talking almost $120 and, you know, and right now, you know, they're, the, the government's, you know, talking about sending these, these, uh, subsidy packages out to people to try to get through for right. one month to the next, you know, why not, why not help these families out and get them involved in the outdoors? And, uh, you know, we might have some new fishermen, you know, and if it, and if it extends, let's say it does extend down into Turkey season, maybe, the, the free turkey license isn't the answer. Maybe it's maybe it's the, the, the base license, the $10 license. Maybe they give that free. Right, exactly. I, th I think there's ways, uh, definitely different ways to approach it depending on what the situation is. And that's a decision that doesn't have to be made now. Uh, it could be made just right before uh, turkey season begins the third week of April. So that week they could say, you know what, hey, uh, help you out. Don't worry about the base license. This year base license is free. Small game hunting for everybody is free. Uh, you, but you still got to pay for whether it be turkey, bear, deer, et cetera. Yeah, right. A big game, I, I fully agree that you need to pay for those tags. Um, but, you know, just a little something to help people get in, get into the outdoors. I just I think that would be a great gesture. Uh, but but on the other hand, I do understand the fact that, that the money, most of the budget money uh, for our, our natural resource, uh, the Department of Natural Resources, comes from license sales. So, you know, I, you, you got to kind of watch how much you take away. But the thing is, is, is it going to cost them that much money? Is Are, are we going to get more people outdoors that would not normally be there? You understand right. what I'm saying? It's, it's not going to cost yep. them in that sense. So, you I don't know, know, but it, 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 what I think it might help, uh, especially along the lines of the fishing licenses, is that if we're going to be cooped up for a few weeks and uh, mom and dad uh, want to get out with the kids and don't want to have to deal with a license because they do have to be licensed. Uh, but if it's free, then they don't have to worry about Mr. DNR officer showing up to, hey, you know, but it might help them get outside, get the kids out, get them doing something totally different and and getting them outdoors yeah well and i and i, and I do want to back up just a little bit i i do know i think if you're 16 and under you don't need a license anyway right, right. i think you got to be but, with a licensed adult but that's that's the point you have to be with a licensed adult so I, if i'm not mistaken you know and maybe if wrong we want to help out a little bit and uh, we waive you know just free fishing weekends or whatever it might be till may 1st or, or june 1st and yeah. then yeah. maybe we uh for this year let uh the, the base license go for this year. Yeah. Ken Cicluna, if you're still online, what do you think about that? Type a comment in real quick. He's our fishing right. guy, so. He's our fishing guy. But, uh, yeah, it's just some of the things that, you know, that I've just been thinking about a little bit um, about what's been going on. So, you know, there's just been so much negative stuff lately. But kind of wanted to keep it on an upbeat note and a little happier note this this week if we could. Um, but you Absolutely. Know, and, you know, my brother's got a comment in here, and he's asking if we have someone that could demonstrate a little bit of rod repair and, and maybe for a show idea. So, you know what, we'll we'll talk about that and see who maybe we can get Ken Cicluna to find maybe that fixes rods or, or fixes reels. Oh, uh, you know what, I just I just see Tony Gertz post on here. He says they were actually ordered to close last week. The trails are still open, so I'm going to, he says he's going to shoot the 3D trail. So the trails are open, but they can't have anybody there at the shop. Okay. Right. Uh, so, 
you know, it's, it's that having more than X amount of people in one spot at, at one time. Wow. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So now you, you've got the opportunity, you've got new bows coming in, but you can't, you can't be open. I mean, I understand. I do. I, I really do understand, but it's just, yeah, it stinks, man. That's sad. It does. And that's one of the things that you just, you, um, ah, we just got to deal with it. I yeah. mean, it is what it is at this point, And hopefully this cycles through what needs to happen and let's uh, let's get this over with and learn from it and then go from there yeah you know and, and on what your brother said uh ken secluna actually posted a picture he had a rod tip broke off so ken if you're still watching if you're not sleeping right <laughs> get off the couch now um when you do that that repair on that rod if you do um shoot a little video on that uh terry's asking about that so showing how to repair some rods charles byerman he's got a question or a comment here and kind of a question seeing the posts that hunters are posting in regards to fill the freezers is good for uh is that good for hunter recruitment or could it encourage poaching it's a good question um i always think poachers are going to be poachers i don't think it i really don't think it matters if there is if there's a crisis or there's not a crisis and if there's a crisis out there and somebody truly doesn't have the the money to buy food and that's the only means i i, I have i'm not encouraging this by any stretch of imagination but people got to eat they got to eat you, you got to do what you got to do if you got to eat yeah you know and uh i've seen some places here in, in michigan where people live up up in the north country and it's like man how how do they survive you know right. there's there's exactly. some rough places yeah you know and you just wonder how people manage to get through the harsh winters and survive um but i i would hope charles that it will actually increase uh hunter retention or you know we'll, we'll start having new hunters come into the fold but i heard an interesting take on this this week and actually i think it was over at sunrise yesterday danny we were talking about this is getting more people involved in the outdoors then you hear the opposite complaint is like, man, I can't find a hunting spot. Everybody's on this public land and there's no place to hunt. And when you bring more well, people in, you know, so it's like, well, you can't have both, you, you know. Well, that's the thing, right? And so there are certain areas and depending on where you're at in the state, uh, a certain part of state land that's available is going to look on October 1st or November 15th. It's going to look like a pumpkin patch. Right. There's no doubt about it. Right. Um, unfortunate. But it's their right. As the state game goes, you can go hunt it. Right. So uh, absolutely. I, I would hope that people start to see the benefit of going up north and to the, some of the areas that uh, need, need need hunters and maybe spending some money there, which would be really cool. Absolutely. I totally agree. Uh, you know, and it's something else that's kind of I was thinking about today, and I'll kind of let this be the last thought here for the show tonight, is we've got five states right now. California, New York, Illinois, New Jersey, and Connecticut that are shut down. You know, there's basically, you know, shelter in place is what they've said. So if you live in them states and you're a hunter or a fisherman, are you allowed to go out and hunt and fish? I guess right now there's not a squirrel season still open here in Michigan, I think, till the end of the month. But, I mean, it may be rabbit season. I can't remember what's exactly open because I really don't hunt this time of year. But with that being said, can you still go out and hunt and fish? Or are are you not allowed to even do that? You know, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the rules. And uh, like you said, I don't know what the the shelter in place means. Uh, You know, if you say, hey, uh, I'm going out to hunt, is that the same thing as saying, hey, I need to go to the supermarket? And is is it vice versa? Or how does that work? I don't know either. You know, and I guess the other thing would be is if you live out in the rural community, it there's nobody to tell you to stay in your house, and if you've got plenty of land, it doesn't matter anyway, right? Right, exactly. I would guess, you know. So yep. the problem we've got is traveling things, to our property. And that's one of the things. Uh, for instance, you and I get together. We head up north and say, hey, we're going to, to your property. Mm-hmm. Is that, I don't know what they, you know, we're not, we don't plan on stopping anywhere. We're planning on going to, to a property, which right. would be yours. Yeah. It's like, uh, how, how would that rule? Don't know. Don't know. So um, I know we got a friend down in Illinois, Denny Steiner. You know, uh, he was on earlier. I don't know if he's still on or not, but, you know, if you're on, Denny, uh, you know, what, what does that entail down there? Are you able to go out and hunt? You know, is that part of the restrictions that you can't go? You're not supposed to be out, you know, doing anything recreational. You know, is that recreation or is that, you know, for some people it could be survival. I don't know. Right. So, well, I'll tell you what, uh, let's wrap it up for the podcast portion of the show tonight. Uh, we had some good talk and uh, good banner back you know, and forth. And, and, and just a, a final thought before we sign off, and what we were 
well, we changed our format because of this. We were actually supposed to have an interview tonight. Yes, we were. And uh, but because of all everything going on, uh, we decided to to pull this format and and kind of adhere to what's going on. So don't worry, we'll get those uh, interviews back. Uh, they just might be pushed out a little bit. Yeah. Well, actually, it was going to be Ken Secluna tonight uh, doing an interview. He was going to come up to the cabin, and uh, he is going to have a uh, pro bass fisherman on. And no, I'm not going to tell you who it was. We're going to save it. <laughs> right. Absolutely. But we, we did. We canceled. Uh, I think Wednesday we we got on a call to get all three of us and decided that this was probably the best thing to do. And uh, we just we said we're going to wait on this. You know, it's it's the right and responsible thing to do uh, for everybody involved, you know, uh, you know, for for you and your family, me and my family and for Ken and his family. So. Uh, you know, and, and Ken, he's on the front line. He's he's a healthcare worker as well. Yes, so. and he's and he's and and two things real quick about that. One, when we did talk to him Wednesday, he was talking about the not the ability not to uh, be able to reorder some of his medical supplies, gloves and hand some sanitizers. Stuff he, yeah, yeah, some of the stuff he does need. And I just got an email, uh, basically a, a, a general email from Harbor Freight that they have uh, each Harbor Freight, wherever they're at, has donated all their rubber gloves and stuff to the local hospitals in that area for 24-hour emergency care place Good in for that them. area. You know, Absolutely. You know, hats off them. And so if you guys are looking for, for some uh, some uh, tools that, you know, maybe you're not looking to spend a lot of money on, I know they're more of a uh, cost savings store. Go over and check them out. You know, you know, support support companies like this that do things to help us out in, in this time of need. You know, absolutely. Whether it be healthcare workers or whoever, so just remember the companies that are stepping up to the plate and helping others out, and uh, that's the place you need to spend your dollars at. So, uh, so for uh, those of you on the podcast, I'll do it for us this week. We will be back again next week. Good Lord willing, the creek starts to rise. Uh, we'll be here. We'll we'll still be practicing social distancing, but uh, we'll come up with some topics between uh, now and next week, and we'll be back again at the same time. Y'all take care, and if you like the show, share it on your social media. Go over to YouTube, subscribe there as well. I've seen a lot of you doing that lately, and we do appreciate that. So uh, we're just looking to build a UNJ uh, family and uh, share uh, share the news and, and with everybody else out there. Y'all take care this week, and we'll see you again next week. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern time on Good Talk Radio. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Spot Shooters Archery, Easy Cut, Packer Max, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Scent Lock, Scent Blocker, Limb Walker Game Calls, Buck Bates, Gut Check, Stanislavski Release Aids, Copper John, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Vapor Hunting Products, and Rebel 6 Rubs. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.